Bible reading can be found on page 75 in your Bibles. If you happen to have a large print one, it's on page 114. It's taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, reading from verse 8. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, For hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Jeremy and coming up and Kate. Are you no not joining? Okay. I'm hand over to you. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be with you all. We enjoy coming when we can. Thank you for your very warm, warm welcome. And we want to say how much we appreciate the support we receive from Christ Church in different ways. Your encouragement, your financial support, it makes a big difference and we do appreciate it. Thank you all very much indeed. God is real and we're invited to come back to him, to turn from our lives of rebellion and doing things our own way and to know God as our loving Father in heaven. And having come back to God, we have the freedom, we have the privilege of living our lives with him, and that involves talking, listening, communing with God. And we call that prayer. Prayer has been called the Christian's vital breath. Prayer encompasses so much, as in any relationship, people talk and exchange ideas in very different ways. There can be times of quiet, smiling at each other. Times of pouring out your heart. There can be times of expressions of thankfulness and appreciation. Times of working through a decision together. There can be times of requests and earnest pleading. Communication in any relationship varies. And so there are many forms of prayer, many ways of praying, many ways of communing with God. One aspect of prayer is what we call intercession, to, to intercede, to come before God on behalf of others or another situation. Patrick Johnston in the book Operation World, he said this, he said, it's a mystery that our loving Father has somehow limited his omnipotence, his power, to teaming up with his redeemed people so that his actions in the world are inextricably linked with prayer. I love the way he uses uh, that phrase. He says, it's a mystery. Because I find myself saying, yeah, it certainly is. It's a mystery, all right. It's a mystery that God should choose to allow us to cooperate 
with what he is doing in the world through prayer. And in the passage we heard just now, we see Joshua and the Israelites fighting with the Amalekites. We also see Moses has gone up onto the nearby hill where he's watching things, and he's there with his hands raised, raised in prayer. It's a a picture of prayer, if you like. We read in verse 11, As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. While Moses was holding the situation, the battle down there in the valley before God, the Israelites were winning. And obviously Aaron and Hur, they seemed to know this too because they came over to help, to help Moses. They were holding up his hands when he grew tired and supporting him, supporting him in prayer. And we see from this passage Prayer influences situations. There was a correlation between Moses raising his hands in prayer and the Israelites winning the battle. As Moses prayed, so they were able to to press forward, to win. As there seemed a flagging in prayer, so the battle seemed to turn the other way. There was this connection or correlation. As Moses prayed... The Israelites defeated the Amalekites. If you want God's best in a particular situation, pray. If you want God's best in a person's life, pray. Richard Halverson said, No place is closed to intercessory prayer, no continent. No nation, no organization, no city, no office. There is no power on earth that can keep intercession out. As we pray, as we seek to see God intervene in situations, so we should be praying according to the will of God. We should be aiming to pray God's will into being. The challenge is not just to pray what I want. We can sometimes get so concerned about our own personal desires and comforts. But actually our focus should be the honor of God. And so often, probably like me, you realize that you know actually so very little about any given situation. We see life from such a very narrow perspective. I see it from my perspective and you see it from yours. And we don't always understand situations fully. God knows best. So to pray for his will to be done in that situation is best. We read in Isaiah 55, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So God's thoughts and perspective is different from ours. But that's the challenge for us to come before God and to pray his will into being. And this is what Jesus said, Matthew chapter 6, taken from the Sermon on the Mount. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the, if you like, the model that Jesus gave us. And that's what he comes to, to pray this. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As Jesus is anticipating his his own death, and he's talking about it with others in John chapter 12, he says this, Father, glorify your name in anticipation of what's to come and the the tension within him that that created, Father, glorify your name, was what he came to. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, 
Jesus prayed, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. So there's an acknowledgement of the the situation and the intensity of it. And Jesus says, take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Praying for God's will to be done, for the Father to be glorified. Elizabeth Elliot, who who is the widow of uh, one of those who went to the Orca Indians in Ecuador and was martyred there. Elizabeth Elliot said this. She said, prayer lays hold of God's plan and becomes the link between his will and its accomplishment on earth. Prayer lays hold of God's plan and becomes the link between his will and its accomplishment on earth. This morning, I want to share three pictures if you like, of prayer that can, I hope, in some way help us to grasp something more of this mystery of prayer. The first picture, it was C.H. Spurgeon, the famous Baptist preacher, who said this. He said, prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscles of omnipotence. I love that. I think that's just a great picture. I'll say it again. Prayer is the slender nerve, the slender nerve that moves the muscles of omnipotence. I should say, actually, any picture is going to be inadequate, but I hope you get the idea. There can be certain pictures that just help us grasp something fresh. And we've got here the image of a a slender nerve of prayer, thin, just little, almost insignificant, And yet it's that nerve that causes the muscle. If you like, the muscle of omnipotence, God's muscle of power to move. Prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscles of omnipotence. We pray God acts in power. Moses prayed on top of the hill. The battle was going on. The Israelites won. Weck's focus is on reaching the unreached around the world. And there's a constant sense, if you like, of the need for more workers for the harvest fields. And we quite regularly pray, according to to what Jesus said in Matthew, to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. We pray that. We ask God to send out workers. Just last week, 10 new folk came into WEC after a course of orientation and are heading to different parts of the world. One couple are going to Thailand, another to the Gambia in West Africa. um, Another couple will be working at a missionary training college in Australia. We prayed, we see workers going out. Prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscles of omnipotence. I didn't bring my bag. The second picture. A padlock. A fastened padlock. Perhaps it could represent challenges. Perhaps it could represent issues that seem hard or obstacles before us. Situations we face that just seem locked and difficult and challenging. It's as though prayer is the key to the breakthrough we long for. It's as though prayer is the key to undoing, unlocking that situation. As we come before God in prayer, God moves, things change. (laughs) 
One example. There was a month of focused prayer for Tibet. A worker who had been outside of the country arrived back from a trip away and commented after the month of focused prayer for Tibet. The worker commented, something's different. It doesn't feel so heavy anymore. It just seems that it's easier to share and bring the kingdom to this place now than it was before. The heavens are opening over this region, and we're beginning to see the first trickles of revival. We pray according to God's will. He moves. Things change. Some of you may be familiar with the story of William Carey. He left England to go to India in 1793. And his leaders were not keen for him to go. It seemed as though he was acting irresponsibly. And his leaders said to him, they said, you know, your trip, your plan to go to India, it's as though, it's a bit like a man going into a deep mine. That's how they they saw it. It seemed... Careless. It's as though you're just going down into a deep mine. And William Carey responded, Well, I will go down the mine if you will hold the rope. If you will hold the rope. And his leaders were left with the impression that they had the responsibility to hold the rope to care for William Carey while he was in India, to hold the rope of prayer, to support him, to care for him in that way. He was, if you like, down the mine. They realized they had the responsibility to to hold the rope, to hold the rope of prayer. And they had that sense that they should never let go of the rope. That was their responsibility, to hold the rope of prayer while William Carey went off to India. Prayer makes a difference in the lives of others. We pray, God intervenes, lives are different. But our focus, as I said earlier, should be to pray for the will of God to be done in that person's life. For God to be honored in that person's life. To seek God's best in that person's life. Who are you praying for? Who are you holding the rope for? Are there friends? Or family members? Or neighbors? Or grandchildren? Or someone you know overseas, who are you holding the rope for at the moment? For many years, we've felt we've been on, if you like, the receiving end of people holding the rope for us and how we've appreciated it, how we have valued folk praying for us while we were in Pakistan and while we continue to work with WEC here in the UK. How, how fantastic it is. Yes, there's mystery involved that we can hold the rope for other people. Who are you holding the rope for? Who are you praying for? In whose life are you making a difference because you're praying? It's a mystery. But God calls us to join with him through the work of prayer, to cooperate with him and to pray his will into being. To persevere and not to give up. Like Moses, up the hill, he got tired, started to feel a bit bit tired and weary. 
So Aaron and her, they got a stone for him to sit on, and they held his hands up. They held his arms because they sensed that as they prayed, that was making a difference down in the valley where the battle was going on. But Moses persevered. Aaron and her persevered with him, and the Israelites won. But it took the perseverance in prayer. I like this quote from John Hyde. He said, I wonder why so many of us are so obsessed with work. For most of us, if asked, would say that we believed prayer to be the mightiest power there is. Isn't that true? If we are pressed... We'd probably say, well, yeah, you know, prayer's key, prayer's important, prayer's foundational. We might come out with phrases like that. And yet, as he says, I wonder why so many of us are so obsessed with work when prayer is the mightiest power there is. But one thing I'm keen is that we don't sit here feeling all guilty and wretched that, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm not like Moses and all the others. No, actually, um, let's not feel guilty like that, but rather let's focus more on the joy and the privilege that it is to belong to God and to be involved with his purposes through prayer. It is an incredible joy. It's an incredible privilege to be able to hold the rope for somebody, to be able to pray for a situation, to be able to see the, the muscles of omnipotence flexed as we pray. To be able to see situations unlocked through the key of prayer. It's a privilege. It's a joy. It's not something that we should pull us down. Don't know if you've noticed the world map. <laughs> Psalm 2.8. Ask me. And I'll make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. Ask me. Isaiah 56, 7 says, For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. For all nations. I wonder, which parts of the world do you pray for? Are there some, or perhaps just never quite get around to it? Perhaps there are some places you're particularly focused on. As I said, the WEC is focused on reaching the unreached. Do you know that they uh, estimate there are nearly 2 billion people who have a very little or no access to the gospel? 2 billion people with little or no access to the gospel. They estimate there are Something like 6,645 distinct people groups, that's culturally, linguistically distinct people groups, who are considered unreached. The gospel hasn't got there yet. They haven't heard. They don't know. Are we praying for some of these places? Are we praying for some of these peoples? You might think, well, I don't know where to begin. No problem. This is what you need. Operation World, magnificent tool to help us all pray for the world. Every country is in here, and it gives the key information to help us to pray. If a book doesn't work, just go to the website. If you're on Facebook, there are 23,000 people who follow Operation World on Facebook. If Facebook doesn't work for you, you might have grandchildren for whom it does work. All right? If you've heard of Twitter, you can... Be connected by Twitter as well. If that doesn't work for you, don't, don't be concerned. But you might know people for whom you just have to say, Facebook, the key phrase is, you like it. You just tell your grandchildren, if it's appropriate, they need to like Operation World. They'll know what you mean. And uh, it's just fantastic to get little bits of information to pray for different parts of the world. And it's arranged in such a way that for every day of the year, there's a particular country allocated. Some countries take up a week or two. For example, China and India do. But today, Sunday the 23rd of November, Tunisia is the country of focus. And so all around the world, people who take this tool 
in different languages will be praying for Tunisia. We're able to join in with them. WEC puts out this little publication. It has uh, one subject per week. This week, it's covering Mozambique. Mozambique's just down here uh, in Africa. Uh, This map hasn't got any country borders on it, so it really does test our geography. Um, But there we are, some information of how to pray for Mozambique, how to pray for the Mwani people, unreached by the gospel, but we can pray for them together at home in our families. Which parts of the world are you praying for? Which parts concern you? What's on the news at the moment? It's easy to watch the news, isn't it? To follow it, to to go to the websites or whatever, and yet we can take it in as information and it can stop there. But do we take what we hear and turn it into prayer? Who do you know overseas? Who are you praying for in a different country, in a different context? Which country is on your heart? Or is there a particular people? Or a particular kind of ministry that you're interested in? that you're praying about. As I say, the WEX focus is primarily going to those areas, to those parts where the gospel has not yet penetrated, you could say. And I could tell you about the the Ursu people of China over here, or I mentioned the um, Mwani people in Mozambique, or there's the, uh, I could also mention, yes, the Purepecha over here in Mexico. So all around the world, there are people who haven't heard, and we have the joy of praying for them. Let's pray for these places. And you might think, yeah, but, you know, where do you start? If we don't have any other information, let's take Matthew 6.10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's pray that. Let's pray that for the Purepecha people in Mexico, the Ursu people in China, the Moani people in Mozambique, and any other peoples and places we know about. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Remember the pictures of prayer. There's Moses with his hands held high in prayer. As we pray, God acts in power, the nerve that causes the muscle to flex in power. Prayer is the key to the breakthroughs we long for. Unlocking situations. We can hold people before God in prayer like holding the end of a rope that supports them. We're going to have an opportunity to to pray, to bring before God people and places that are on our hearts. Perhaps the music group would just like to, uh, to get themselves ready. I've got some stickers. And I'm going to invite, invite you all to come forward and to take a sticker, just one, and, and, and to put it on the map, on that place that you want to pray for, that that place where there's that person or that people group or that area of work, but whatever it is, the sticker can just mark that place as you effectively say, oh, Lord God, there, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, in that place, amongst the Purepecha, the Moani, the Ursu people, your will be done as it is in heaven. As you come up, you might like to take away one of these if you want to. Um, please feel free to. There are some just on the side. But come and take a sticker and do it prayerfully with that sense of, yes, God, this place, this person, these people. Could be there's more than one place, more than one person. I've got plenty of stickers. (laughs) Don't worry about that. But let's see if we can all come up and do that. Just start thinking, which place, which person? And I've asked the music group, they're going to lead us in singing How Great Is Our God, The Splendor of the King. You know the song, it's got that chorus, How Great Is Our God. And perhaps that will be your prayer as you think of that person or that place and you just 
kind of echo that. How great is our God? It seems like a challenge, but how great is our God? There are the Moani people. There are the Purepecha people. There are the Ursu. How great is our God? Your kingdom come. Your will be done. I know somebody here and here and here, and we can pray for them. We can put stickers. Let's just cover the map in stickers. Uh, we can sing for ages, so there's no problem. Well, okay. I mean, within reason, I guess. Um, so, do you get the idea? We'll start singing. We'll affirm how great is our God, and we'll bring the stickers. Let's, I'll, I'll just pray, and then I'll hand over to you. Father, it is a privilege, a joy, that we can commune with you in prayer and cooperate with you and see change and see your kingdom come and see your will be done. Father, would you continue to move us all to prayer, that we would be faithful in this joyous task, this privileged task. Father, we ask that you would lead us even now as we pray with the song in Jesus' name. Amen.